Welcome back everyone to another exciting edition of Seed Time and Harvest, where we're learning how to grow our food practically. Now, Cherise, what did we talk about last week? Well, I'm glad you asked. The last time we were here, we talked about different herbs and how easy they are to grow, as well as some very practical benefits that we can use those simple herbs yes, yes. for healing. We looked at cilantro, we looked at mint, and we looked at thyme. And we learned something very interesting about thyme, yes. and that is the pH, and we learned that we need good ground. So tell us some biblical principles that relates to gardening. All right. So... The good ground is something that the Lord talks about. Mm -hmm. If we look at the slide here, <clears throat> it says in Matthew 13, mm -hmm. verse 8, But the other, referring to the seed, fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some in hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. And so here the Lord tells us that in order for you to bear fruit, you must have good ground. Yes. And he refers to that as a parable teaching a spiritual lesson and that is so true because we know we need if we have good want to have good productive plants we need the soil which is the foundation yes and another very important thing as we look at minerals p the ph of the soil is very important for the plants and what is ph that's true well ph is the potential of hydrogen ions mm -hmm. in water Okay. And practically what that means is that it measures the alkalinity or the acidity of, in this case, we're looking at the soil. The soil. Okay. Right. And the question is, why do I even care about that if it's alkaline or acidic? Well, as you mentioned, the scale of pH is ranges from zero, which is most acidic, to 14, which is most alkaline. And we feed our plants, but what we need to realize is that we can give our plants all the nutrients that it needs, but if the pH is out of range, then the plant will not be able to absorb those yes, nutrients, yes. even if they're available in high numbers. So the pH is essential for the plants to be able to convert that inorganic or new plant matter in the soil to something that the plant can readily absorb and convert to food. All right. So in, in other words, simply stated that the pH is important Yes. because the pH tells you the plant is able to absorb the nutrients. Right. So no matter how much you have in there, it doesn't matter because if you don't have the right pH, even though it is important, but the plant won't be able to absorb it. Right, and I'm glad you mentioned that because this is something that we have to consistently think about in soil management because there are factors that affect pH. And what are, can you think of some factors that may affect the pH in the <coughs> soil? Yes. You, some of the factors are when you look at the microbes that right. are in the mm -hmm. soil, the living matter. Your worms, and your microorganisms. Right. Like that. The, the, uh, even the bacteria, because the bacteria will start using this organic matter. Right. And then it will um, release this acid into the soil, causing it to be more acidic. Right. And on the other hand, when it rains, this also will lower the pH. Yeah, leaches calcium right. and alkaline forming components from the soil. So you pH, you have to manage your pH in a sense, is that what you're saying? That is correct. Okay. And so now that we understand that it is important, how, how are we to, to know or identify the pH range of plants? Well, we have to consider that each plant's needs are different. While some plants may love water, some may love a dry condition. While some plants may love an acidic environment like your berries, your blueberries, your strawberries, even your potatoes, those like an alkaline environment. And we, the, the reason why most plants will prefer an acidic environment, I'm sorry, your berries like an acidic environment, like your potatoes, your blueberries. True. And the reason why they love this environment is because they, are, they have access to more nutrients at a lower pH. But you have to be careful as well. You don't want your pH to be too low because then you, what type of toxicity may be in the soil if your pH is too low? Well, one of the ways, and we can talk about this later though, mm -hmm. that would be to decrease the acidity would be by adding things. And so we can talk about this as a, at a later time. Right, but what we right. want to look at right now is let's look at this slide here. Here we have a list of vegetables mm -hmm. and their ideal pH. 
And we're going to talk about three of them in particular. You can see here that there's a lot of them. There's 18 here. But just for the sake of this presentation, we're going to look at three of them. We have our blueberries. Blueberries enjoy the pH of very acidic. And that is 4.5 to 5.5. Okay. This is very acidic. Now, the kale or the strawberry, let's go in order. The strawberry, they enjoy a slightly acidic okay. soil, which would be at a range of 5.5 to 6.5. And then your kale, which is uh, preferring a more alkaline, very uh, <clears throat> close to neutral uh, pH between 6 and 7.5. And just in case uh, somebody might not know, 7 is your neutral point. Right. Then you have anything lower than that is acidic. Anything higher than that on your pH scale is alkaline. alkaline. And so you can research, depending on what plants you're thinking of growing that season, you research what your plants love. Because also right. you, want, you don't want to plant an alkaline loving plant next to an acidic loving plant because then there is going to be competition there for okay. nutrients right. and some of the nutrients may not be available. That's and true. also we have different ways to yes. test our let's, pH. Let's get some practicality yes. done. So How do we do that? How do we test the pH? Well, you can do several, there are several ways to test your soil. You can take soil samples and you can take them to your local extension office or you can purchase testing kits. Here we have a rapid test soil kit. We have a pH and light and moisture meter that you can use to test your soil. You can use baking soda and vinegar, which we'll talk about Now, shortly. may I interject? Sure. Thank you. The, the, the baking soda and the vinegar is probably the less accurate of the ones that we're gonna right. use. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna make mention of those. Okay. The, the baking soda and the vinegar, how does that work, Sherry? Well, with the baking soda and the vinegar, you wanna test, you wanna collect a sample of soil from your garden or from your pot choose two or three locations, you're going to combine that sample. And then from that combined sample, you're going to take out probably two, tip, two teaspoons. And with the vinegar first, you're going to take that two teaspoons of soil and you're going to put half a cup of vinegar into that mixture. Now, if it fizzes, then you'll have an alkaline soil. If nothing happens from that same sample that you collected, take two teaspoons and you're going to add a quarter cup of distilled water to that two teaspoons of soil and then you want to add a half a cup of baking soda. Right. Now if that fizzes then you have an acidic soil. And if, yes if, and this this method though is very inaccurate so that's why we're not doing the practical part of it. Why, why? Because the range is broad. Right. Because the acidic... You have to just look at the bubbles and see how, how it um, reacts right. and then make an estimate. So even with the, the take-home test, the colors, though, um, is how you... Can, can we look at that? Can we sure. see, can we see sure. an example? Yes. All right. So here we collected a sample of soil from our blueberry plant here. All right. So let's take a shot of that blueberry. It's a little bit big, so we didn't want to raise it up here. So we collected sample from three different locations in our blueberry pot. And from that sample, we collected a smaller sample. And you want to collect different sample areas so that you get the most accurate reading for your test. Okay. Now, with our rapid test soil kit, what we're going to do, and you can you re read your instructions because each soil kit may vary. So you're going to see a line at the bottom that says, to this arrow you fill with soil. So we're just going to, sorry, take a sample. And while you do that, let me grab this water here so we can... Okay. And you do not want to use distilled water when you're doing this um, sample. And why is that, Jose? Well, we saw that every time we use the distilled, it would give us a neutral reading. So we want to shy away from that. Yes, because distilled water is neutral. It's a 7.0 pH. And so once we get our soil to the level that it is, we're going to add the um, capsules. Each soil kit will come with different color-coded capsules that you will use to determine the, the pH or you can do the NPK. You have actually four testers that te test for nitrogen, potassium, phosphate, as well as the pH. So the green capsule will match the green 
top of this test tube. So we're just going to pop a capsule in here. These are not edible. Please keep them away from your children. If you have babies, you don't want to have any accidents in your home. So we're going to put the capsule in here and we're just going to fill it with water to the fill line. And that takes about a dropper. All right. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to close this and we're going to shake it up. And you're just going to match the color from the tester with the color that's on the line. It's going to give you the pH scale on here. And from our reading, we can see that this blueberry plant is, what would you could think that is? Let's give it a, a better shake there. And it looks like it's close to seven. So I would probably say it's close to neutral. Mm -hmm. Slightly acidic, close to neutral. So we see that this is not the correct pH that our no, blueberry plants it is need. Not. And because as you mentioned before. Let's look at that range again in our slide. Blueberries mm -hmm. want 4.5 mm -hmm. to 5.5. Yes. So that means that this pot right now, that blueberry is struggling to, to the get the nutrients, mm -hmm. even though we, we have infused it with all kinds of nutrients, it's not getting everything that it should. So, yes, yeah, so we, we've been feeding it, but still the pH range is off. So we're going to need to adjust that pH for our blueberry plant. Yes, now, so stay tuned and we will show you how to do that. Today we're doing tests. Okay, so we're just going to pop this out. We're going to get some water in here to rinse it slightly. For our next test. All right. All right. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to collect a sample of our kale plant. Let's do the strawberry first, since the strawberry. Okay. Since we're going up in the oh, pH that's right, in the pH scale. So as we mentioned before, you want to get your strawberry plant, and you're going to take a sample. You want to remove the top two inches of the soil. Did you want to go ahead and do that, Jose? Sure. You're going to remove the top two inches of the soil and then you're going to collect a sample and you want to do the same size sample from each location. So you're going to choose another location and get a different sample. All right. And this is essential because you want your plant to be able to get all the nutrients that it needed so that it can be productive and it can be um, very beneficial in terms of producing fruit that will give you the nutrients that you need for your growth and development. All right, so here we have that sample and we're going to just take a little bit out of here. And we're going to fill our tester. You know what, while, we're, while we have this plant here, let's try and, while you're doing that, I'm gonna use this here. Right, to check the pH for that and one. And let's, this, is, this here now we have a electronic one. The same way that you test your pH, but this one is a digital measuring. Now the way you use that is that you stick it in at least about six inches into that soil, and then you turn it on. <clears throat> You also want to move it around. And that was giving me a neutral reading. So I'm going to clean that off and test it on a different spot of that pot. And again, I'm getting a neutral reading. And while you're doing that reading, here we have our strawberry, and we see a strawberry likes a 5.5 to a 6.5 pH. And we see here that this plant actually is about at a, between a 5.5 and a 6. So this is a good reading for our strawberry plant. So you're getting a 7 there, and this one is getting closer to a 6.5. 
So let's, okay, so there is the accurate reading. Oh, wait, there it goes. Now it's, it's coming down to 6.5. Mm -hmm. And so, so as you can good. see, these, these testers are, are not 100% accurate. You, you have to keep probing until you get an accurate reading. Yes, but this one, is, this one is, looks pretty decent. Now, if you want to get the most accurate sample, um, test pH, test for your soil, you'd have to take your plants to an extension office. And so we're gonna ask you to stay tuned. We're gonna come back and we're gonna show you how we can amend our soil for each plant to get the accurate pH. That's right. And thank you for joining us. Happy planting. Happy planting.